There are lots of stories about technologies and knowledge from ancient peoples that have been lost to us through history. In reality, most of those things that were lost have been figured out independently by modern people, and we have better modern versions of almost everything the ancients had, including things like Damascus steel. That is, except for one thing. Learn more about Roman concrete, the stuff which has lasted over 2,000 years, on this episode of Everything Everywhere Daily. This episode is sponsored by Skillshare. Back in the ancient world, if you wanted to learn a skill, you'd have to spend years learning your trade from a master. Today, we have Skillshare, which can help you get up to speed quickly. They have videos on almost every subject you can imagine, including things like designing your own furniture, milling your own lumber, and how to put shingles on your house. With Skillshare Premium, you can have unlimited access to everything for as low as $8.25 per month. Go to everything-everywhere.com slash Skillshare to get a free two-week trial of Skillshare Premium Membership, or just click on the link in the show notes. Before you decide to skip this episode because you think the idea of talking about concrete is boring, realize this. For most of you listening to this podcast right now, there's probably concrete somewhere around you. If you're listening in a car, there's concrete on the road. If you're walking, there might be concrete on the sidewalk. And if you're in a building, there's probably concrete in the foundation or maybe the walls. Concrete might not get a lot of attention, but it's really important stuff. Modern civilization wouldn't be possible without it. While the Romans were great engineers and builders, they weren't really great innovators. Despite existing for centuries, the Romans can't really be said to have left us with much in the way of technical advancement. Many of the things that they're best known for, such as aqueducts, weren't actually Roman innovations. They got them from other civilizations, such as the Etruscans. However, there was one thing that they had that no one else has been able to figure out or reverse engineer for over 2,000 years. Roman concrete. The Latin word for it was opus caementicium, and it was a particular blend that was used to create many of the structures which are still standing and, in some cases, are in use today. We should start our discussion with the difference between concrete and cement. The two terms are often used interchangeably today, but they are different things. Concrete is a mix of aggregates such as rocks or sand and a paste. Cement is an ingredient in concrete and is part of the paste. Cement, which in its modern form is called Portland cement, usually has a base made out of lime and is mixed with water to create the paste which holds together the aggregate in concrete. Today, there are different types of concrete depending on what your needs are. There is concrete that will dry fast, concrete that can harden underwater, and concretes with different load-bearing properties. So, what was so special about Roman concrete? Basically, it was really durable. Modern concrete is pretty good, but over time, microfissures will develop, those will expand, and over the decades, the concrete will crumble. You've probably seen examples of crumbling concrete at some point, be it on a building, road, or a bridge. Roman concrete didn't do that, at least not easily. If you go and visit Rome, the dome over the Pantheon and the triumphal arches you'll find in the Forum are almost in perfect condition. Whereas many other structures have fallen down from earthquakes over the last two millennia, many of the structures which have stood are made out of Roman concrete. What was even more impressive was how it worked in seawater. Concrete tends to decay much faster in seawater than on land. However, Roman concrete didn't suffer from this. In fact, it got stronger the longer it was in seawater, which is totally counterintuitive. Probably the best preserved Roman concrete used in seawater can be found in the ancient port city of Caesarea in Israel. Built by Herod the Great, the breakwaters used in its harbor are still intact today, over 2,000 years since its construction. Pliny the Elder wrote in his book Naturalis Historia around the year 79 that Roman concrete, quote, as soon as it comes into contact with the waves of the sea and is submerged, becomes a single stone mass impregnable to waves and every day stronger. Unquote. So, Roman concrete is pretty amazing stuff. So what do we know about it exactly, and what makes it so good, and why were we unable to make it for so long? The answer to the last question is, we lost the recipe. The vast majority of knowledge which was written down in antiquity has been lost, and much of the common knowledge which might have been used by tradespeople may never have been written down. The great Roman architect Vitruvius wrote down what little we know about Roman concrete. His treatise, Ten Books on Architecture, 
is really the only surviving text on architecture and building from the ancient world, and spells out the basic ingredients of Roman concrete. There were three components to Roman concrete. Lime, an aggregate, which was usually rocks, and the third was something called pozzolana, which is a volcanic ash that comes from a particular spot near Naples. This specific ash was the key to Roman concrete. Before, when I mentioned the harbor at Caesarea, Herod the Great imported 44 shiploads of pozzolana at 400 tons per shipload to complete the project. So, believe it or not, much of the Roman success in building came from the fact that they just happened to live next to the perfect material for concrete. The recipes they developed over time were through trial and error. Those specific recipes are what's been lost in time. What the Romans didn't know was why it worked. Thankfully, modern researchers have figured out what made Roman concrete work so well, especially in seawater. Normally, when microfissures develop in concrete, it's the start of the process which will eventually lead to its destruction. Over time, the fissures get larger, and at some point, the concrete will start to crumble. In seawater, this process is accelerated. However, the unique mixture of Roman concrete and seawater causes something else to happen. When water enters the microfissures in the concrete, it stimulates the creation of a mineral called aluminum tobermorite. This mineral grows and fills in the gaps in the concrete, making the structure harder and more solid over time. Aluminum tobermorite is actually a rather rare mineral that usually only forms at high temperatures. But it also just so happens to slowly form over time with Roman concrete. As we're learning more about the secrets of Roman concrete, it might just hold the key to making better concrete today. It turns out that Roman cement used less lime than the Portland cement used today. This is important because cement production, and the heating of lime, is one of the largest emitters of CO2 on Earth. A more Roman-like concrete would actually require less energy. Moreover, a good substitute for the natural volcanic pozzolana found in Italy is fly ash from coal-burning power plants. We haven't reverse-engineered the exact recipe of Roman concrete yet, but we're getting close. By studying this 2,000-year-old concrete, we're unlocking its secrets, and we might use this information to recreate this ancient formula, or maybe even make something better. Executive producer of Everything Everywhere Daily is James Makala. Associate producer is Thor Thompson. Today's five-star review comes from Podcast Republic. Listener Abdullah writes, Great underrated podcast, worth all the support. I wish I could support through Patreon, but unfortunately I live in a third world country torn apart by wars and conflict. Please keep it up. Thank you, Abdullah. Helping spread the word is a great way to support the show, and I absolutely appreciate it. And thanks to all of you who've left reviews and support the show over on Patreon.com. Your support helps me produce a new show every single day.